one says we have a 25 pound block that has an initial speed of 10 feet per second when it's midway between springs A and B. And then after it hits spring B, it rebounds and slides across the horizontal plane towards spring A and continues to move back and forth. If the coefficient of uh, kinetic friction between the plane and the block is 0.4, we want to find the total distance traveled by the block before it comes to rest. All right, so let's kind of look at this one. We've got this block here and it's gonna go this way. It's gonna hit the spring and it's gonna compress the spring. It's gonna to come to a stop and then the spring is gonna push it back out this way. All right, so first thing we wanna do is figure out what's going on when we hit this spring over here. So let's do that first and then we'll figure out how far back it travels this way after that. All right, so let's uh, look and see what we want. First of all, we want delta x. So that's the total distance traveled. So basically, if we go to here, stop, and then come back to here, I want that total distance. That's what we're looking for. So first things first here, let's look at the motion from C to B. Let's make a little note here. So we're gonna look at um, the motion that's supposed to be motion. Motion from C, which I'm calling the starting point here. So from C to the compression of B. Because we're going to push that spring in towards the right. And let's see what we get. So let's look at the free body diagram. So we'll just draw a rectangle here. Um, and then our forces. So we're going to have normal force. We're going to have a weight, so mg. And it says we have friction, right? The kinetic coefficient of friction is 0.4. So if we're moving to the right, friction is going to be to the left. And friction is going to be that 0.4 times the normal force. And then we're going to hit the spring, right? So we hit the spring. It's going to compress this spring. The spring doesn't want to be compressed, right? It wants to be at its natural length, so it's going to push it back out. So we're going to have spring force going to the left here. Now I'm going to solve this using work energy methods. There's some other ways you could use it. You could use Newton's second law, that type of thing. But I'm going to use work energy here on this one. First thing I want to do, let's find N because I need that for friction. So just looking at this, um, you can tell that n is going to be the weight, but let's we'll go ahead and write the equation out. So n minus mg is going to equal zero. So n is mg, and mg is 25 pounds. With that equal to 25 pounds, that means our friction is going to be 0.4 times 25, which is going to give us 10 pounds. And we'll use that when we do our work calculation. So let's go ahead now. We're going to remember be using this work energy equation. Let's go ahead and find this left side, which is u. So we're going to look at every force that does work. So we know friction does work and the spring force that does work also. And we know that because the displacement is in an X direction, right? It's in a horizontal direction. It doesn't matter if it's going to the right or to the left. It just matters that it is, you know, along that same plane, if you want to think about it that way. So both those forces are in that direction. So those will have work. So let's go ahead and do U. Let's do the friction first. So 0.4 times N, let's write that down. 0.4 times 25. Now we need the displacement. All right, so we need our displacement. Now, if we look back up here, we've got one right here, plus I've got the compression of the spring. So that's this SB that I've got labeled here. So we're gonna have one plus SB. All right, so let's go ahead and put that in here. So one plus SB, we need to figure out if it's positive or negative. Remember, if it's positive work, the displacement and the force are pointing in the same direction. So in this case, both would have to be in the right direction. Now here, friction's going to the left, but the block is moving to the right. So those are in opposite directions. So we're gonna have a negative work here. Friction, or not friction, the spring force is right here. Notice it's going to the left, but our displacement's to the right, so that one's going to be negative also. So we're going to have one half 
times k, which is 60 for spring b. And then I need the stretcher compression in the spring, and we're going to square that. So that then is going to be this sb value, right? Because this length that it's originally shown, that's the natural length of the spring. So we're going to push it back to here. We're going to come to a stop. So this would be my compression amount. So we're going to put sb squared. Right now, let's go ahead and kind of simplify this a little bit. We're going to have negative 10 minus sb minus 30 sb squared. So this will be this left side. Now let's go ahead and get delta t. Remember, t is kinetic energy. All right, so delta t is 1 half m and then v squared. We want the change in kinetic energy though, so we're going to have 1 half m v2 squared minus v1 squared. So let's fill that in. 1 half times the mass. I wasn't given the mass, right? I was given the weight. Weight was 25. We got to divide by 32.2 to get mass. The final velocity is going to be right here. That's going to be what? zero, right? Because it's going to come to a rest and then it's going to take off again. So the final velocity is going to be zero. The initial velocity is shown here as 10. So we're going to have zero squared minus 10 squared, which gives me a negative 38.82. Now we can use this equation, set everything up. So with that, we have negative 10 minus 10sb minus 30sb squared, and then that equals negative 38.82. Then we just need to solve, right, for sb. So before we do that, let's group everything up. And then we'll get a quadratic equation that we can solve. So if we do that, move everything to one side, we get 30sb squared plus 10sb, and then minus 28.82, and then that will equal zero. So do quadratic equation or plug that into your calculator, let it solve it. You're going to get two values, negative 1.1609 is the first one, and then there is 0.8275 units, there would be feet. Obviously for a length, we can't have a negative number, so this goes away. We don't want that one. So we're going to use this. So remember, this is the distance that the spring B gets compressed before it comes to a stop. And then once it comes to a stop, spring B is going to push it back to the left. Okay. So that's what that is there. Now, we know what happens up to this point. And then I know the spring is going to push the block back this way. But I don't know for sure if we're going to get all the way to A and then compress A. We don't know that. So we just want to calculate first how far we go. That way we'll know if we hit spring A. So let's look at that. So let's see if we even get to spring A. So we need to answer that question before we can do anything else. So let's put, do we reach spring A? Okay, well, let's look and find that out. First, I'm going to draw a little picture here just to make it kind of easier to see what we're looking at. So if we have our springs here, we got our A and our B. Remember our initial location is going to be right here and this distance is SB because spring B initially was out to here, right? And then we compressed it. And this right here is our initial starting point. Now the distance between the natural length of B here in A is two feet, right? And we can see that in the picture up here. All right, so here's the natural length of B when it's fully extended. And then this distance is two. So that's gonna be important when we're looking at our displacements and everything. So now let's go ahead and let's figure out how far spring B can push the block to the left. 
All right, so we're going to be using work again. So I'm going to draw another free body diagram. It's about the same as this one, but there is one little difference. So let's see what that might be. You probably already know. All right, so there's my block. And what all do we need to put on there? Well, we need a normal force. We need the weight, which is 25 pounds. Now I need friction. Now remember at this point we're starting over here where the spring B is compressed and we're going to go to the left. So if I'm moving to the left, friction then is going to go to the right. So we're going to put friction here to the right and that's going to be 0.4 N. N is still going to be 25 pounds. And then the spring force, well we've compressed spring B so it's pushing back to the left. So that's not going to change from the first diagram. So now we've got this. All right. So same process that we did up here. We're going to find U. We'll find delta T, set them equal, and see what we get. All right. So let's do U here. And two forces that do work. Again, spring force and friction. Let's do the friction first. That's 0.4 times the normal force, which is 25. And now our distance that's traveled. Well, we're starting here, and I'm going to go some distance to the left, right? I don't know what it is, um, but I'm going to assume we go past SB here and then move forward this way. So let's get another term here. So let's just say... SA is right here and actually instead of ending it let's just put a little arrow. Right. So let's call it SA. So SA is just going to be the distance traveled to the length of you know past uh, where B is at its natural state. All right so let's have it called SA. So then our total displacement is going to be 0.282 Seven five plus that SA. And let's make a note. This is the distance beyond the natural length of spring B. Okay, that's what that SA is. And that's what this here is trying to display. Now let's look at our sign. Is this positive or negative? Well, again, it's friction, right? It's going to be negative because friction's always opposite the direction of motion, so it's negative. And then we've got our spring force. So we know that is one half times k, which is 60 in this case. And we started off with the spring compressed, this value of SB, right? That amount. So here we're going to have one half 60 times SB squared, right? So we've got that, and we know what this value is. It's 0.8275, so we can plug that in to that equation. And is this one going to be positive or negative? It's going to be positive, right? My displacement's to the left. The spring force is also to the left. So this one is going to be a positive here. Okay, so now we go in, and let's simplify this. We end up getting negative 8.275 minus 10 SA plus 20.54. So that's what we'll get for work. And then we can go ahead and combine these terms also. So there'll be negative 10 SA and then plus 12.265. So that's our work for this one. And now let's get our change in kinetic energy. So our change in kinetic energy, remember, is going to be the 1 half times the mass times V2 squared minus V1 squared. And remember, our first position here is going to be when we're over here at this compressed state on spring B. So with this, we're going to have 1 half times 25 pounds over gravity. Gives us our mass. And then our final speed, we want it when it comes to a stop, right? So that's going to be zero squared. And then what's the initial speed? 
it's going to be zero also, right? Because we've compressed the spring B and we're just sitting here, right? And the spring is going to push us back to the left. So both of these are going to be zero, which makes for an easy calculation because it's just zero. So now we can set this equal to zero because I know U equals delta T. So we're going to have negative 10 SA plus 12.265 equals zero. SA then is going to be 1.227 feet. All right, now the question here is do we hit the spring at A? All right, that's what our goal was in doing this. We want to figure out if we even hit that spring at A. Now if we look at our little picture here, this was SA. Okay, it's measured from the natural length of spring B. And the distance between the end of spring B when it's in its natural state and spring A is this two feet. So we only went 1.227 feet. So that means we kind of stopped like right here. So we never even got to spring A. So let's put 1.227 feet is less than two feet. So we don't reach spring A. Okay, and that's good because otherwise the problem would just keep going. Now remember we're looking for total distance travel. That was the goal of this whole problem, finding the total distance that the box travels as it goes back and forth. So what we're going to do is calculate that by using the distances we've calculated. All right. So first, let's scroll back up to this main picture here. So we start here, we travel the one foot, we compress the spring a distance of SB. So that's one plus SB right there. And then we go back, which is SB again, plus the SA value. Okay, so we got to add all of that up. So essentially, we're going to have SA plus 2 times SB, because we compress the spring and then it stretches back out, and then plus 1. So just plug those numbers in. We have 1.227 plus 2 times 0.8275 plus 1, and that is 3.882 feet. And that will be the total distance traveled by that block when we have this configuration with the springs. See y'all again next time. Y'all have a good rest of the day.